So was being in showbiz something that you always wanted to do? Well, I was always a radio guy. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know, to, to uh, be in radio. And uh, anything, I guess, that came along with the radio was fine. And um, any chance you get to uh, use your voice, uh, you take. And uh, I was doing uh, mornings here in Orlando. And I got a phone call from the folks at Nickelodeon that were looking to uh, recast Harvey's role. Mm. And so I went in and read for it, and I, was, I sounded goofy enough to get the job. Mm -hmm. So were you a fan of Double Dare before you got the job? Did you watch it, the show at all? Uh, I knew Mark Summers. I knew of Mark Summers. Uh, I didn't necessarily watch, although I knew of the show, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, so you got to um, Harvey filling for Harvey. Um, was there a reason why he um, didn't sign back on? Do you know why? Why he didn't uh, rejoin the show? Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, they moved out of Philly, mm -hmm. and they moved moved down to Orlando, mm -hmm. and uh, he had a full time radio job up in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. And plus, he, he was having a baby. Mm -hmm. So it didn't work for him, you know, because he would have had to have given up his full time, you know, Philadelphia job. And at the time, there wasn't the technology to broadcast the show from Orlando back to Philly. Uh, now, the, you know, because that was 1992, now the technology exists where he could have done that. Right, right. And so, and the same with radio, I'm assuming. Now, that we just mentioned Ustream Converge and all that stuff, so. Yeah, technology yeah. has changed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's changed a little bit. Yeah, yeah, because back then, what did you guys used to do for radio? Like, just school me a little bit. <laughs> How to. Uh, well, I mean, you know, we just worked, you know, radio stations, you know. You know, we had, um, uh, you know, one studio, and uh, of course that's changed now, too, because everybody owns everybody. And, uh, it, um, I don't know. I mean, you know, the basics of radio haven't changed. Right, right. It's just the amount of stations that are in one building have changed. Mm -hmm. but basics will never change because, uh, there's only one way to do it. Broadcast. Right. Mm hmm right. I understand. I understand what you're saying. So, when you first arrived to Nickelodeon Studios, like, what was your first impression? Because it was a huge studio, I must say, being there from my experience. Uh, I was scared. <laughs> you know, there was um, all kinds of people running around, and uh, I just, you know, came in and, and, you know, met the person that I was going to do the audition with, and, uh... There was a whole bunch of people in that room hoping to get that job. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, read the script and studied them and just kind of stayed quiet and listened to people talk and, and went in, went into the booth, um, let a couple of auditions rip, and then they called me back for uh, a second round because Mark liked my voice. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it, was, it was me and somebody else, and then they chose me. He chose you. It must have been exciting but intimidating at the same time because at that point, Double Dare was so such a huge success for the network and it was already being popular among the kids and they were touring the country doing tours and live events. So, yeah, it was really an exciting time but really scary from your point of view, I must say, if that's what you well, think well, about. Yeah, once you realize just how big it was, you know, I mean, once you, once you, you know, to yourself. I mean, this is really what Nickelodeon is known for. Mm -hmm, right. And, it, and Nick has grown so much that uh, that's not the case anymore. But uh, and they tried that with Double Air 2000, and uh, that did not take off uh, the way I think they hoped it would. Oh. So, oh no, uh, it didn't. No, no. And so right, right then and there, you know. You're dealing with uh, the franchise. And the idea was, man, don't mess up the franchise. You know? And when, when they told me they, I got the job, that's all I could think of. You know? Like, don't mess up the franchise. <laughs> because, uh, you know, you're announcing 
everything was live, and there were no uh, second takes. Second, right, right. It was filmed live to tape. The format of the show is that correct? Yeah. Right. All right. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you only got one chance. Mhm. I see. So at the studio, there was a lot of activities. Do you remember other shows being filmed where you were at at the time? Yeah, I don't remember the names of them, but uh, there was about three other shows that were being filmed separately, but at the same time. Mm-hmm. Once in a while, you run into you know somebody from one of the other shows, but uh, they kept us all pretty separate. Do you remember what the shows were about? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, I can't remember. Jeez, that was 22 years ago. <laughs> well, I think at the time there was Clarissa Explains It All that was filming there, I believe. Yeah, I think that, I think that was one, yeah. Yeah, and that, and maybe Guts were filming there, Guts and Nick Arcade, that was there, too. Yeah, that might have been it, yeah. All right, so... They all sound, they sound familiar. <laughs> Yeah, it has been a long time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the sound stages, they were pretty big. Like, were you just amazed by the sound stage? Because not only did it held up, they were kind of like hold up a whole audience and they could fit a lot of people in there. Were you surprised by how much you guys were able to do in this big studio lot? Yeah, it, it was, it changed a lot. You know, they had lots of changes because not every, you know, show had the same, you know, challenge, uh, the uh, Double Dare Challenge around. And so there was a lot of space. I, I thought it was neat to see where the audience sat. And um, I could see them, you know, starting to fill in. Uh, and that's when I'd get all pumped up and get a little nervous. You know, and uh, you, I, we all take our positions, and uh, you know, the people would be coming in, and you could see them—they'd wave at you, and wave back at them, and even if they didn't know who you were, you were part of the show, so they were happy about that. And uh, and then, uh, you know, you hearing your headsets, you know, the directors uh, getting ready and. Uh, off we went. It was uh, a lot of fun. The audience was uh, a big part of the show. Their energy. We needed their energy, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that was the best part about having a live studio audience, just the energy and and them just screaming and yelling at the families. What was the best part about having that? Well, it kept you awake, you know, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, they had a certain... They had a certain um, energy level and it kept your energy level up you know because I did a, I would do the morning show at uh, XL1067 and then I'd race right from there over to the Nick Studios to uh, start uh, taking the days uh, worth of shows and I'd leave about uh, maybe 5.36 so having the audience oh, excuse me yeah, I just made myself yawn thinking about it Having the audience there and having the audience pumped up, uh, you know, being able to talk to them, you know, during breaks. Yeah, yeah, it was a great atmosphere. It was fantastic. You know, it was, it was perfect for what they wanted. Absolutely, absolutely. And not only that, there was a tour, the studio tour, where there was like a glass monitor and the guests, they would like, Watch you guys from up above while rehearsing or filming. Do you remember that part as well? Yeah, yeah, they get uh, slimed, um, so that was always uh, fun. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, we were aware of it. You really couldn't see it from where I was standing. Um, it, was, it was very, uh, very difficult to see. Yeah. But I, I knew it was there, you know, because I had people tell me later that they, you know, they came through. I see, I see. Yeah, because I, 
Because a guy told me yesterday that the sound stages, they were pretty dark. And so only the guests could see you guys filming. But from down there, downstairs, you guys were could only see each other, the crew guys and the cast members. So I, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we knew where the audience was. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as tours or anything else, we saw none of that. And I, and I think that the theory behind that was that it would have been distracting for us. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, in a way, I'm, I think that's a real smart move. Right, right. But speaking of Orlando, um, back then there was all this talk about it becoming the Hollywood of the East, but it just quite faded over the years. Um, from your recollection, was there a lot of filming and production going on in Florida at the time? Was it a big... Actually, there's, 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 there has been a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's never going to be Hollywood East. But uh, there was, you know, quite a bit of things, quite a, bit, uh, a few things being filmed. Uh, you know, major, uh, major motion pictures. They had, uh, you know, shows like, you know, with the Nick Studios. And they filmed, uh, there was a, uh, a show being filmed out on the lot. Uh, a couple of shows, actually. Uh, one was an underwater science fiction show. Sequest, uh, yeah. that was the name of it. Yeah, Sequest. Yeah. Uh, DSV. Right, right. We'd run, we'd, we'd run into those guys all the time. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, the potential was there, but uh, it was cheaper to do them in, in uh, Los Angeles. Cause that's where everybody's home base was. Yeah. You know, it was tougher on the actors. Um unless you were, you know, making pretty good money. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't move. I could have continued to work and do voiceovers for Nickelodeon, but I couldn't move out to Los Angeles, you know, right. because, uh, quite frankly, my money, or, you know, the majority of what I was earning was on the morning show. Oh. So, unless you, you were lucky enough to strike a, a morning job out there, you really stayed behind here you know so that was a bummer because I used to like going back because they they continued to sell Double Dare to uh, clients and sponsors and so they'd call me in once a month and we would uh, we would redo the commercials so a lot of the commercials that you see now if you watch Nick Gass they weren't the originals right right and Nick Gass and, and you, what's that and Nick Gass is a network that's no longer out, so yeah, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I don't know Gas isn't there anymore either? Oh no, not at all. It it it's been off the air for like six years now, yeah. Uh, I didn't know. Yeah. You said about Nickelodeon it wasn't would you say it was nine union back then, their payments? Yeah, that was it was it was good pay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You know, I, I missed that, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, it was considered part-time work. Mm -hmm. So, it would, it, you know, if there was nothing going on, and you didn't have another job, you were in trouble. You know? Wow. So, that's why, you know, I continued doing the, the morning show here. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and they went on to L.A. Right, right. You know, I understand. But speaking of that activity, there was not only Sequest, DSV, there was shows like um, Superboy, The Adventures of Superboy, if you remember that, and Swamp Thing that was filming on the lot. But yeah, it was really a great time for the film industry, for not for the East Coast, for, for the most part. It was, yeah, it was good for our economy, too. Mm -hmm. Because it was part of the attraction, you know, um, when people would come to Orlando, of course, the number one destination is going to be Disney. And then um, they, they had other options. They could come over to Nick Studios and watch shows being filmed. You know, they plus, and then it was SeaWorld, Universal, all that other stuff. So there was a lot more going on for people to come see. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. The tourism is the most popular. Um, thing about Orlando, but 
basically filming and whatnot, that was kind of like a down factor. But I think it could have worked because filming or in Orlando, where it's kind of reminiscent of um, Los Angeles a little bit. International Drive reminds me of Los Angeles a little bit, actually. And um, you know why? Because yeah. the traffic doesn't move. <laughs> right. Right. So what was a typical day like working at Nickelodeon? Because I wanted to know how many shows you guys taped a day. Well, we would take, start at 10. I'd get there at 10 and, and they're ready to go. So I'd get my scripts and, and read through them as quick as I could. Um, if I remember correctly, we did three to four a day. Three to four a day. All right. Yeah. We had audience change outs and costume change outs, studio change outs, but I think we squeezed three to four in a day. Three to four. All right. That must have been a lot. Oh, did it go by so fast in a day? It wasn't exhausting. It went by pretty quick. All right. You know, I mean, there was a lot of home, there was a lot of hurry up and wait. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they gave us all dressing rooms, so, you know, if you needed to just to lay down and look over your scripts or just to lay down in general, you know, they, you had some place to go. You didn't, have, you didn't have to just hang around the, you know, the studio. I see, I see. And that obstacle course for a double day is pretty uh, extraordinary, but is there one type of prop you would have loved to own from the set, though? You know, uh, when I look back at it, um, I don't know what they did with all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but yeah, probably a, a mug full of uh, slime. Hey. I, just, uh, I got slimed. I got tossed in the old uh, slime pool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, but that was, that was nothing in particular. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. I was about to ask you that, actually. What is it like to get slimed? It's gross. Mm -hmm. it, it comes right off you. You know, it, it does come right off you. But uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of a pretty gross feeling. Well, you, know? yeah, because from everyone I've talked to, there was like a shower in the studio to clean the slime off, and sometimes it would get in your hair, but it could smell good, kind of like, it could smell good. Well, it didn't line. smell bad, it didn't smell bad, but the slime was cold, right. they, you know, they, they, they kept the, um, they kept the studios cold, and, uh, so the slime reflected the temperature of the studios, mm -hmm. so when you, when you got tossed in, it was, it was cold. Right. Oh, so you so it was kind of a shivering cold, I understand. Yeah, yeah, you got it. All right. And slime, that's like really the trademark. And at the studio, there was certainly a lot being made. Like the Gat Kitchen with the Gak Meister. Did you, do you remember that part, seeing make all the slime and Gak for all the guests who would stop by and take a tour? Do you oh, remember? yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Did you ever taste they any of it? They showed us that when we were... Uh... Mm -hmm. And did you ever taste any of it? No, not intentionally. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the slime geyser that was outside the front of it, that that's like when you step into Universal, you could just see the geyser and the big old Nick sign. What do you recall the most about the geyser that was out front of the studio? Out front? Yeah. Um, uh, well, see, we used to go through the back. Yeah, that's right. I know that. Yeah, and so I didn't really see much of anything. We would park, and then I'd walk uh, into the, uh, the the studio that we uh, 
taped them. There wasn't much back there. A couple of props here and there. Awesome. All right. And Universal, the studi studios, has changed and grown tremendously over the years. It's become a different park now. But what's your favorite ride there now or back then? Uh, well, I love City Walk. City Walk is awesome. Uh, City Walk, uh, Universal City Walk. Because, yeah. Because uh, I, I just like the, the energy and I like all the restaurants. I'm guessing uh, I like Spider-Man. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's a cool ride. Spider-Man, yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that, um, the Hulk roller coaster, Jaws, um, so much stuff there. <laughs> yeah, well, Jaws kept breaking down. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And it, would get too, and it would get too close to the fire and people would get burned. Oh, no, it's gone. It, it went away in early 2012, I believe. Yeah, that's when it went away. Yeah, sadly, it's gone. But um, so at the studio, did you ever get to do live events across the country with Double Deer and whatnot? No, no, they didn't take uh, uh, a lot of us that were back uh, at the old studio. They never took us on tour. Uh, some of us were able to go, some of us can't. You know, like you say, man, that's a that's a long tour, and you've got a job. You know, uh, you know the radio station wasn't going to give me the time off to, uh, you know, just go jumping across the country while they still paid me. So, right, oh, okay. So the, you're basically the radio job was kept you busy a lot from doing other size stuff. Yeah, well, I mean that was my main, you know, uh, that's the, that's the main um, uh, source of income. Mm -hmm. I mean that's where they discovered me at, you know. So that's what um, you know paid that's what paid the bills. So you, you go where the bills get paid. All right, all right. So, what do you think made um, Nick Studio so great and special? Just the way they kept it kid friendly. Mm hmm. You know, and uh, they didn't uh, they didn't relinquish from that. You know, everybody was uh, good chemistry. It was great chemistry between the people there. Oh yes, absolutely. Everyone I talked to said they were just friendly people and great people. How great were all the staff that you remember from working there? Everybody was nice. I mean, I never met anyone that wasn't. You know, it was they'd say hi to you and then they'd ask you how you're doing. And yeah, that was everyone was everyone was um, had everybody else's back. You know, everybody everybody worked as a team. It was, it was good to see. Awesome, awesome. And do you still keep in contact with anyone from this, from the crew of Double Deer or family Double Deer? Any? Um, I don't see him much anymore. I saw one uh, one fellow. I can't remember his name now. Um, he, he and I did uh, the mascot Olympics here in Orlando. I was the announcer for him, and uh, he was out uh, working. Chris, uh, I don't know if it's Chris, I can't remember Chris's last name, but uh, he'll kill me for that. <laughs> but, uh, he's the only one I've seen. I haven't seen anybody else. Oh, it's been a long time since you've seen Mark or Robin. and. Um, on yeah, the... well, I interviewed Mark, Mark uh, on the radio a couple of times afterwards. Okay. And uh, just for different projects that he was doing. Oh, okay. and, no, I haven't seen Robin or any of those guys. Oh, okay. And finally, I guess the last question is, would you like, this? the studio is certainly missed by a lot of people for nine years now. Would you like to see it be reopened one day? Do you think it should come back, Nick Studios? Heck yeah. <laughs> There's work for people, you know? Um, it was a fun place. It was opportunities. And the people that come here miss it. You know, I mean, they really do. They they miss uh, they miss the opportunity to see live shows being done. And uh, I think it was a real, real, super bad, lo big loss when the studios went back to or went out to uh, Los Angeles. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, the theme of Universal back then, ride the movies, um, see the stars, and certainly Nickelodeon added it to that part of bringing the entertainment industry to the East Coast, especially in a, in a tourism area like Orlando. It benefited a lot. And I think it could certainly do well today if the time and effort was being put into it, I must say. And that's why I created the project, just to see how fans could appreciate this whole building and what it was, you know? Well, really, right now, for the shows that were on that long ago, you know, you can find them on the internet. Mm-hmm, right. You can, you can Google them. They're all over the place. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, it's fun when you look back at the prizes we were giving away and how old they look now. <laughs> right, right. Like, VCR is ancient, and some of those destinations were um space camp that was one of the projects where the family could go to and one of those um you know those ancient computers like i know there were no laptops back then they weren't popular but you know those typewriters oh yeah 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 we were uh we were laughing at it about i don't know about a year ago um somebody pulled it up and they were they were looking at the prizes we gave away and they were like, well, you guys thought you were the real top dogs giving this stuff away. And I said, yeah, yeah, I don't think you could even find that in the flea market anymore. Oh, no, no. And if it certainly were Double Dare bring back today, like, the prizes would be enormously nice, like an iPad. That would definitely be one of the top prizes. And it certainly ch changed technology, you know, <laughs> like you said. Yeah, well, you know, if they were to equal out, but those prizes back then equaled, you know, yeah, sure, we'd be giving away all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, people would love it. But in 1992, that was, um, that was a big deal. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think I still have a VCR in my box somewhere, but don't hold me to it. <laughs> but um, Hey, yeah, never get rid of it. You might be able to sell it for a nickel at a garage sale. Hey, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just might do that, actually. I just might do that. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because so many of these 90s shows and Double Deer certainly is one of them. They made such a positive impact on fans and it's still loved today. Like, how does that make you feel when people recognize you, you know? It's pretty cool, you know? Um, I'll have people now that are like 30. And it, and, it, and it makes you feel a little bit old, but not too bad. And they'll say, I watched you on Double Dare when I was a kid. And uh, you know, it'll, it'll freak you out for a second because you don't think about time passing like that. But yeah, we get that. I still get that. Have you ever ran into any of the former contestants who are now adults years later? Have you ever met any yeah. of them? Oh. Uh, no, not that I know of. They never, they never said that. Oh, all right. All right. And I guess this is my last question, but overall, what was your overall experience like at Nickelodeon Studios? 100% positive. positive. And I look forward to it every day. There hasn't been a job, I mean, I've had a couple, but there hasn't been a job that I uh, enjoyed as much. Um, okay. That's awesome. Awesome. And yeah, it was a great place, like the world's first headquarters for kids. That's what it was nicknamed. And yeah, I just hope that people will still remember for what it was, you know. I think it gets remembered, but unfortunately, it's an era gone by. Mm hmm. And there's not much you can do about that. Right. But, uh, just that uh, it was a real good time. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think that about sums up everything, but before I let you go, can you do one last thing? Yeah. Um, at the end of the credits, you used to say, Family Double Dare was recorded in front of a live audience in Nickelodeon Studios at Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida. <laughs> do you remember? Do you mind saying that one more time? Family Double Dare was recorded before a live audience at Universal Studios, Nickelodeon Studios in Florida. Okay, okay. You still got it, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I, I still got it. It's been a while. It's, it's been a while since you've heard that, huh? A while since I said it. 
seen that uh, script. <laughs> what was that like? Was that like ADR? Did you have to record that? Why exactly did you have to do that? Say that line. Do you remember? Um, that was just the end of the show. Oh, okay. Just for promotional ways, basically. I, you know, yeah. Just the end of the show. That was it. Okay. All right. Well, Doc, it was certainly a great talking to you today. And, yeah, thanks for being a part of the project. And I'll let you know when the interview is up. All right, man. Look forward to hearing. All right, cool. Have a nice day. Talk to you later. All right. Thanks, bud. Bye. Bye.